What's up, guys? So, it's gonna be a long video. I'm sorry. I'm just telling you right now. Um, but let's get into it. Okay, so, what I'm gonna be doing today is making a video about how I got from being a private pilot to a pilot at Jet Suite, I like to say an airline pilot, in about a year. Okay, now literally a year. Okay. Um, and if you wanna be technical, uh, it'd be like a year and I don't know, like six months if you start from when I was a student pilot. So if you count from when I was a student pilot, it's like a year and six months. If you start from when I became a private pilot, it's exactly a year, actually a little less than a year. Okay. So I started my flight training uh, through my high school in uh, September, actually more like probably in November of uh, 2016 and I finished and I got my private in June of 2017 I graduated high school in May of 2017 anyway so I finished June of 2017 okay and I had my private and once I had finished I was kind of at a crossroad because I was like okay well I really want to knock out my ratings fast and I also need to go to college and so my original plan was I was going to do ASU's Part 141 program and get my degree and my flight training at the same time. And I was going to, um, I was going to spend like four years getting my ratings, and then by the time that I graduated college, I would be a flight instructor. Um, and I really didn't like that idea because first off, it cost a lot of money. I had a full ride scholarship to ASU and I was getting paid to go to ASU. So that part was taken care of, but I still had to pay for my flight train, which was about $80,000. And I wouldn't be making any money in, for about four years. So that'd be four years of interest, plus me paying off my loan. The total would have come to like $215,000 total because I decided to take four years to get my licenses. So I was like, no, that's just stupid. I'm not doing that. And, uh, Little side note, kind of off topic. In my opinion, going to college and going to college 141 program, knocking out your training in like three to four years, in my personal opinion, is probably one of the most inefficient ways you could possibly go about doing this. Um, on paper, it looks good, and all your other friends are going to do it, but I, I personally think it's stupid. And to you guys doing it, no offense, um, but I really think it's a waste of time because you could go to someplace else, like I'm going to explain in this video knock out your training fast, and then either do your college, do a degree that doesn't involve aviation, which I highly recommend, or do something online and spend your time flying and get to the airlines fast, okay? That's just my opinion. Um, I'm not hating on these schools, they offer great programs, but I'm just saying if you wanna to get to somewhere fast and cheap, that's not the way to go. So, uh, what I decided to do was I decided to push entering ASU by one semester. So instead of starting in August of 2017, I was going to start in January of 2017. I was going to start ASU, or sorry, I was going to start ATP. So that put me on a timeline. That meant that I had to finish ATP before school started or else I was going to be screwed. So I started up ATP, finished my training. Due to delays on ATP's side, I ended up finishing uh, my training about a week after school started, so like early January, uh, probably around the 10th of January or so, that's when I finished my training. So now I'm doing standardization for ATP, and I'm taking classes at ASU. And so I decided that I wasn't going to want to say a ATP for a number of different reasons. So I switched to a different, um, one second guys. So I switched to a different flight school. I ended up at flight instructing for Westwind School of Aeronautics. Okay, my thoughts getting kind of dry. Um, and that's about 40 miles away from my college. So I was like, oh God, this is gonna be hard. I was like, whatever, my car works good, so I'm gonna make this work. So I started doing this ASU thing. And honestly, ASU is making me really frustrated. I didn't really like it. Um, I liked being there, but I didn't really like uh, uh, the, I can't really explain like I like being around people and hanging out with them but the actual 
going to school and having to abide by all these stupid rules and dealing with teachers and what I consider to be nonsense, I just didn't want to do it. Um, and eventually I got frustrated, so one day I went to ASU, I just got off of training because I was doing standardization now for ATP, which is basically getting ready to be an instructor. I get to ASU and I'm like, you know what, I just, I can't do this. Like I was running around campus trying to find my class because it had been moved three different times and nobody knew where the class was. So like, you know what, screw it, like I'm dropping out. So I went home that day, dropped out of ASU. Family was pissed, like livid. I was like, yo, like if I stay at ASU, I'm gonna be tied down. Like I'm limiting my opportunities. The only jobs I can take are jobs in Phoenix that don't, that don't have me travel out of town often. Other than that, I have to deny them. And I was like, I didn't want that because this is a perfect time to get into aviation and there's so many opportunities out there and I don't wanna miss it because I'm tied down to ASU. That was a big reason. So I dropped out and I started working at Westman School of Aeronautics. Um, so right now I'm at, I'm at about 270 hours, okay? So I get hired at Westwood, I do my training to become an instructor there, and I start instructing, and I decide to enroll at Ember Riddle Online. Now understand that enrolling, doing it this way, it's faster, it'll be to the airlines, and it's cheaper, but in exchange, you are missing out on the college experience. And every now and again, I kind of miss it. I kind of wish I would have taken advantage of it, or at least have done it a little bit longer, mainly for the parties and stuff, um, and hang out with friends and meeting new people. That would have been great. But at the same time, that kind of puts you in line to get in a lot of trouble. If you're out partying a lot, you could end up in the wrong place at the wrong time, maybe get a criminal record, and then there goes your flying career. So it's a sacrifice, but it kind of helps keep you on the straight and narrow. But that's just one thing to be aware of. So anyways, Westwind and Ember Riddle Online, that's two things that I was doing. So I was doing that for a little while and I was like, okay, well, I'll be an instructor for three years and I'll go to the regionals and blah, 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 blah. But uh, one day, my friend, he owns a flight school out of uh, Phoenix called Eagle Sport. Great place, I recommend you guys look into it. He calls me, he says, hey Jay, you know, I got this King Air that I need to reposition, do you want to come with me? I was like, yo, bro, let's go. I'm at the airport, let's go, man, let's go. So we get there. And you know, he takes off in course and I get to fly it for a little bit. And um, it was great. It was great, it was fast. It could hit max speed under its own power, you know? Um, it could go above 10,000 feet with no problem. I, I just loved it. It was the systems and there was stuff to do and you felt the, when you kind of took off, it kind of pushed you back in your seat a little bit. And I was like, wow, like I, I need this. Like I don't, <laughs> I don't really want to be in the Cessna anymore. And so I was like, okay, well, let's see what I can do. So I applied to a number of airlines. I applied to Boutique, I applied to Merit Flight, I applied to, uh, where else did I apply to? Key Lime Air. Oh, my resumes got denied. I didn't have enough hours, I didn't have enough this, I didn't have enough that. But I was just like, okay, whatever, fine. I guess it's not gonna work out. I'm gonna have to be an instructor for a while. So, one of my friends through a Facebook group um, was talking about his airline and how they were hiring with relatively low minimums. So I just shot him a text. I was like, hey man, you know, is uh, Jet Suite, are they, how, how, you know, what's their minimums looking like? You know, how can I get on with them? And, you know, he gave me some of the deeds and you know, he was like, yeah, you know, we're kind of hiring guys at low time, we're pretty desperate for pilots. So I was like, okay, cool. Like, you know what, I'll apply. And uh, through his help, I was able to get an interview. And so I got to the interview and I was like, wow, uh, this, is, this is insane. Because I was going against guys who had just retired as United Airline guys, captains on a 787 with 30,000, 40,000 hours, been flying for 30 plus years. I was like, wow, there's no way that they're gonna take a 19 year old with 300 and some hours. At that time, I maybe had 310, 320 hours to my name. And I was like, there's absolutely no way. But I said to myself, you know what, I'm here, I'm going to do the best that I can, um, and I did. And I'll be honest with you guys, when I was doing my interview, I did feel a little intimidated, and I lost a bit of my confidence going up against these guys, because I was like, I'm not going to get hired um, going up against them. And uh, 
what you need to realize is that if you make it to the interview, they're already considering hiring you. Hiring you. All you have to do now is convince them that you're the one to hire. But I didn't have that mindset. I was like, they're gonna hire these guys, but I'm gonna try hard anyways. And so I did, gave my best effort. I messed up on some things. Um, I thought maybe that wasn't the best answer on the HR questions. Uh, but in the interview, I was like, you know what? I think I did, I did the best that I could do. And for that reason, I'm, satisf I'm satisfied with how I did. So, about a week goes by, and I was like, you know what? Yeah, they're not gonna call me, you know? It's been a week, nothing's gonna happen. Uh, so, <laughs> so, the next day, like a week and a day later, I'm getting ready to apply to boutique again. I'm like, oh God, all right, I guess I'll send another resume in. And that's when the jet, that's when uh, the, the chief pilot at Jetsy calls me. And he's like, is this Jaden? And I'm like, yeah, who's this? That's the, the chief pilot at Jetsy, and we just wanted to congratulate you on getting the job and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, are you serious? Like. You can't, is this, is this for real? Like, is this, is this a real thing? Like, did this, did this really happen? And so, uh, guys, I was, I, oh my God, I, I still can't believe I got that call. It was amazing, absolutely amazing. Um, so he was like, do you want the job? Yes, I want the job, let's go, let's go. So I get the job, he's like, your start date is like May 26th. Um, so I quit my old job at Westwind and I go to um, Jet Suite, do my NDOC training, and now I'm in Dallas working on my type rating. Um, so that's my story on how I got to where I am in my process. Now we're gonna switch gears. Now I'm gonna talk about what I felt like I could have done better. So first things first, um, I would have asked more questions in my training when I um, was doing it. So if I could go back, what I relied on to get me through my training was a lot of rote, memor rote memorization, okay? So I knew that uh, like the cloud clearances for class A airspace, which is none because it's class A, or class B airspace, you satchel miles through your clouds. Like I knew that, I could recite it off memory, but I didn't know why, there was no correlation there. So it wasn't until I became an instructor and I was teaching this stuff that the correlation came. I'd recommend that you guys to try to gain as much correlation as possible while you're students and while you can ask questions and not look stupid. Um, because the last thing you want is to be an instructor and you're trying to teach the stuff to your students and you don't really even know what you're talking about, all right? Um, so that's one thing I would do differently. Um, Another thing I would have, uh, I can't say I did differently because I ended up doing it, but I would have done it earlier. Uh, I would have started A and B Riddle online a little bit earlier than I did instead of spending time at ASU. Um, if you guys want, like you can, you can become just a CFI. Let's say, let's say you want to do what I originally was going to do which is become a CFI and then just go to the local college at your, um, in your state or in your city or whatever. For me, it was ASU. And that's kind of the best of both worlds. Um, you get to fly on a regular and you get, to get, you get to have that college experience. But in exchange for that, you can't really go to the airlines because you have to be in Phoenix or wherever to go to college. So, this is where it kind of comes to sacrifice, right? Like, which do you really want? Do you want a college experience or do you want to get to the airlines faster? I wanted to get in a jet ASAP. And so I said, I know that if I want to get to a jet, I can't be tied down to Phoenix. So that's that's one of the main reasons why I ended up dropping out of ASU and I switched to Brutal Online. I can pull up my laptop and I can do my schoolwork anytime, anywhere, whenever. So that's what I did. Um, and because of that, now I can be at places like Jet Suite because I'm not tied down to Phoenix. If I have to get up and go, I can. If I need to live in Burbank, California, I can. I'm not like living in Burbank, California, but I can do it. I couldn't do that if I was at ASU. So that's one of the things you want to think about. Do you want airlines or do you want college experience? And don't just say, oh, I want the airlines because it's jets. Understand that eventually, whether it's in a year or if it's in four years, you're going to get to the airlines. 
but you're not always going to be able to get that college experience back. But I decided that I wanted to get the airlines ASAP because I knew it would allow me to get to FedEx faster. And in my mind, my end goal is FedEx. All the decisions that I make regarding my career is based on how fast I get to FedEx. All I want to do is fly for FedEx, okay? And I'm not saying anything um, negative toward JetSuite. I love JetSuite, guys. This is an amazing company. And from the pilots that I've talked to, from my experiences so far, I love this place. And I'm going to be here for as long as I possibly can. And I'm not going to go anywhere else until I get to FedEx. Uh, and that's about six, seven years out. So I'm going to be here a long time. Um, but yeah, that's... But in exchange for that, I'm not going to get that college experience. So that's one of the things you guys want to think about. Um, besides that... Um, there's really nothing else I would change up. I feel like... One thing you guys need to realize is that if you if you go my route, there is going to come a point where you can't go any further. So right now, I've kind of maxed out on how far I can go. I can't go any further than I am right now at this moment in time, okay? For one, I'm limited, I'm limited by the regs. So I can get my ATP, restricted ATP, at the age of 21 not due to my college degree, but just because I'll meet the time minimums of 1,500 hours, and I'll have all my hours that I'll need so I can get my restricted ATP. But that doesn't allow you to become a captain. So all I can do is I could go to a regional. I could switch to a 121 regional. I'm not gonna do that, because a regional is not gonna treat me better than JetSuite does, so I'm gonna stay at JetSuite. The only thing that lets me do within JetSuite, though, is switch over to um, JetSuite Charter, JetSuite Inc., they fly Phenom 100s and, two, 100s, 100s and 300s, and that way I can be based um, at Phoenix if I want to be, instead of being based in Burbank. But that's really all I'm, all I'm doing. I can't upgrade to a captain until I'm 23, and I get my ATP. So that literally means that I can't make any more progress until I'm 23. And that's kind of the downside. Um, so... The benefit is, is that I'll become, uh, I'll have a ton of time, a ton of turbine time, and I'll get my PIC time really relatively quickly because I'm going to be high on the seniority list. Um, because JetSuite has a very small pilot pool right now, so being high on the seniority list seven years from now shouldn't be an issue. And that will in turn help me get the FedEx as fast as possible. And right now, I think that I'm pretty much on the fastest possible route to get to my end goal. Um, but yeah, guys, just understand that. Like, If you do my route, you're going to work fast and you're going to work hard for a solid year. You're going to sacrifice a lot. And then you're going to have to wait for a long time. And But once you're done waiting, okay, once you're done waiting, then you're going to be at your goal at a unbelievably young age and the thing is that you're also going to be making a lot more money than uh, not to be arrogant but than most of your friends at least in my age um, at Westwind I was making about 30 bucks an hour as independent contractor flight instructing I could have charged 60 bucks an hour so you can make good money and I can promise you that if you're my age none of your other friends are going to be making that much money I can promise you that if you are 30 or 45 or however old you are, most of your friends still will not be making that much money an hour. So you'll be sacrificing a lot, but you'll be getting a lot. And it just really depends upon what your goals are, how fast you want to get there, and what your lifestyle is, and all that good stuff. Um, but anyways, guys, that's kind of my two cents. That's how I got to where I am. Those are the things that I would change up. And that's kind of how I recommend you do it. If you want to get from jets to, uh, sorry, if you want to go from private to jets ASAP, that's the roadmap, in my opinion. And that's how I did it, and it worked for me. And if you already have your degree, well, you don't have to worry about that then. Then you can just go from private to jets in a year and just chill. And you'll likely be over the age of 21, so you won't have that restriction that I do. And you can just become captain in about two years, and when you're done, you want to major. And the thing is, guys, is that you want to get into this ASAP. 
ASAP, guys. The industry is amazing right now. They need pilots bad. What I'm doing, 19 flying jets, man, that you couldn't do that 10 years ago. And I wanted to get in here and take advantage of that ASAP. I didn't want to wait four years to take advantage of it. Um, so if you guys can and you want to and you have the passion, you have the fire in your stomach and you want to do it, guys, do it. Don't think about it too long. Don't think, oh, I don't know, like there's a lot of risk. I did that. I was just wasting time. Get in there, do it, get it done. It's going to be hard. It's going to be fun, but it's going to be challenging. But at the end of it, you're going to be way, way ahead of your peers, man. So yeah, that's how, that's like I said, that's how I did things and that's how I recommend you guys do it. Um, yeah, anyways guys, so just going to conclude this video. Um, if you guys have questions, comments, concerns, as always, leave them in the comment section below. Feel free to add me on Instagram, uh, J-A-Y-C-A-Y-99, J-K-99 uh, is my... Instagram tag. I'm going to leave the, the, the tag, not the tag, uh, the username in the description below. And I think there's also a link on my YouTube page um, that will guide you over to uh, my Instagram. You guys can have me there. I follow back. Um, and if you have questions, you can DM me there. You can introduce yourself. I love talking to a lot of you guys. I meet a lot of you guys in person. Uh, you guys recognize me like at the airport every now and again. So it's great. I love talking to you guys. So feel free to hit me up. Anyways, it's going to conclude the video. Thank you for watching. I apologize that it was so long. I don't exactly like making long videos because it's kind of hard to sit through 21 minutes. But uh, I hope this uh, you guys learned something. All right, see you guys.